we introduced a concept of algorithm focusing on what is it all about its importance in computation and types of algorithms and few examples that will clearly justify the use of algorithms in order to solve problems an algorithm specifies a well-defined process to accomplish a task this task may be carried out either by a human being or by a computing machinery for both these types of tasks we can pen down the steps to be followed and that becomes the algorithm although if we talk about the algorithm at the very outset the thing that comes to our mind is a computing or computational device but however we can write also algorithms for a task which is done by a human being because an algorithm is nothing but a well-defined set of states to accomplish a task any task which is performed by a human being he also he or she also follow certain steps to complete that task and now we can pen down we can write down all the steps one after another and then that becomes the algorithm however we need to be careful enough that the set of steps mentioned in the algorithm should lead to completion of the task unless the task is completed that steps which is noted down or which has been written down cannot be considered as a as an algorithm to understand better let us consider a task of preparing a cup of tea by a person there are certain steps to be followed in order to prepare a cup of tea for example the first step take milk and water in a boiling pan step two boil it for n minutes and maybe anything within the necessary period number three add tea and sugar number four boil for another n minutes number five pour it in on a cup then number six serve so once if we follow all the instructions properly then a cup of tea will be ready so this procedure if we note down here if we pro if the procedure is written down that becomes that becomes the algorithm so this is the algorithm of a task which has been carried out by the human being and this algorithm is useful when we do the same task again to better understand when to use this type of procedure let us assume that a has instructed b to prepare a cup of tea but unfortunately b is not aware of the process of preparing tea he is not aware that is why what a can uh, what a can do a can give this set of procedures for preparing the tea and b can exactly follow those steps and finally as a result he will be b will be able to prepare the cup of tea so that is why this algorithm although in terms of human computation in terms of human task we do not call it as a procedure but still it is kind of the recipe that we use for preparing any food from a computational task perspective an algorithm is a well-defined computational procedure that works on some input and produces some output it is a computational procedure that transforms input into the output even if we look at the very basic principles of computing then we will find that a computing system is based on three components first one is the input which is been supplied to a process and this input is processed this is processed here and then it produces the output input is the raw data or raw material that is supplied 
to the computing system and output is the information that is being produced after processing the given input and when we talk about the algorithm that is algorithm is the steps here algorithm comes into picture the algorithm that we defined will transform this input data and it will produce the output and that output is called the information this output is called the information while we write the process or while we write the procedure for a computer then we need to be careful enough because like human being a computer cannot detect errors or it cannot take any decision because it does not have any intelligence that is why while we write down the steps into the when we write down the steps in a uh, algorithm to complete a task we must must ensure that all the tasks should be precise and clear so that the computer can perform that statement without any confusion that is why when we write down an algorithm for a computer task or computational task we need to be careful enough and it should have some characteristics like first of all it must have to operate on some input and should produce some output apart from that all the statements need to be unambiguous and all statements need to be feasible and also they need to be precise based on the way that an algorithm solves a problem it is divided into several types few of the types are recursive divide and conquer dynamic greedy brute force and backtracking these are various types of algorithms that we use to solve our problem that we encounter in computation the first one the recursive algorithms or recursive type of algorithm what it does it splits the problem a big problem into smaller problems and it tries to solve a smaller part first and if the smaller part is get solved then the bigger parts are solved in terms of the previously solved smaller parts in short in case of recursive algorithms an algorithm calls itself means the big problems or bigger problems are solved in terms of the smaller problems second one is divide and conquer problem here also the big problems are divided into smaller problems however in this case what it does initially it splits the big problem into smaller one and each of the individual components are solved individually separately and later on all the results are combined to get the final output or final result final solution third category of algorithms that we want to uh, specify is a dynamic type of algorithm where the known results or known solutions are memorized and the big problem again in a dynamic type of algorithms also the big problems are divided into smaller one then the smaller one is solved then once the problem is solved the memorized results are used in the new portion of the problem so dynamic problem basically it memorizes the previously known solutions and it make use of that solution in order to solve the rest of the problem then another category of the algorithm is greedy algorithm and it solves the problem part wise smaller parts are solved and then after solving the smaller problem slowly it increments the problem area into higher part that is the bigger problem is a uh, bigger problem is divided into smaller one and part wise a small part is solved once this part is solved and it goes to the second part that way it solves the entire problem and brute force it tries all the possibilities and it removes the fail steps it, it means that it tries one solution or it tries one possibility to solve a problem if that possibility cannot solve that problem then that possibility will be removed 
and it will try another possibility so that way it solves the problem few of the examples of this category of algorithms the recursive algorithm we use the recursive algorithm in case of computing the factorial of a number or finding the Fibonacci series divide and conquer approach is used in many of the sorting algorithms like merge short quick short dynamic algorithms are used in providing solutions like shortest part uh, short, shortest part all to all shortest part means in it is used in the graph when we want to find out the shortest part from any of the node to any other node then we can make use of this dynamic algorithm and greedy algorithm is found in minimum spanning tree i mean finding the minimum span, spanning tree in in a graph then brute force algorithm it is found in finding the say four digit pin or three digit pin then backtracking algorithm we find in uh, this is uh, this is found to be used in eight queens problem solving eight queens problem or traveling salesman problem so these are few types of algorithms that we come across when we solve problems of our real life is it really necessary to write an algorithm to solve a problem because we have seen many programs or we have come across many programs which we have designed or developed without being considering the algorithm for example if i take a very small problem let us say add two numbers two numbers so here it's a very small task to be accomplished by a task or this is a computational task and we can write a program for this task and we need not have to write the algorithm for that similarly there are many programs that we have solved so far for which we did not write an algorithm before solving the problem or before writing the program but that's why the question that comes is it really necessary to have a an algorithm before writing the program to solve a problem in general or in reality an algorithm works the same way as a building model works for a civil engineer a machine prototype works for a mechanical engineer in this case in case of civil engineer actual building is the product actual building is the product however this before building the actual product he designs the model for that building again here the same thing comes that when we 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 saw many houses built by engineers without a model but however when we see a big projects like a big apartment or any shopping mall certainly we will find a model of that project before starting the uh, starting before starting the construction of those buildings so this model helps the engineer to find out the flaws find out the pros and cons of that type of building that he is going to construct and based on the their observation before actually constructing the building he can modify that model he can modify that model so that in while he builds the actual building those problems will not occur similarly in case of a problem which is solved by a computer we need to write down here the product here the product is actually the program or the application before designing this application or before writing this application what we can do we can write down the algorithm having an algorithm before actually writing the program helps the program or developer in many ways first of all the problem in hand can be solved without having knowledge of any programming specific programming language means this algorithm algorithm is always language independent and second thing he can or does the developer can perform an analysis on the time and space 
required by this solution to the problem and these time and space are two very important factors to be considered while writing the program because writing and writing a program which will give you the solution is not always everything along with the correct result the program should always uh, program should also keep an eye on the time that is required to complete the solution or find the solution second one is space occupied by the program or by the data structure or data used in the program is another important factor so once the algorithm is designed this algorithm can be analyzed from time and space complexity point of view and the developer can decide whether this process of solving that problem will be better or it will give you a better solution or not so that is why it is important in case of any complex or time critical problem solution or time critical problems there is always a good idea to design an algorithm before actually designing the or writing the code for solving the problem so that was a quick and small introduction to the term algorithm and we have we have discussed about uh, what is the what is an algorithm or what an algorithm is all about then also we have uh, discussed about the types of various algorithms and we have also seen the importance why it is necessary to write down an algorithm so that's all for this session this video and thank you